What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're taking a look over here at the Ripple XRP price chart. We'll also peek over there at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market like we typically do. I did take the day off yesterday. It was a green day yesterday. But as you can see, we are still just kind of in our creek going on in here, which is something we've been talking about for the last week, where the price just creaks sideways. And, you know, this can go on for quite a while. But at the end, prices are still just kind of remaining in their same areas. Some examples of when a creek can happen is we had one back in here for XRP after the SEC sell-off. This is what we would call a creek. This is a pretty drastic creek. In the end, hard to know how deep this one will go as it's going on like this. But it's pretty much doing precisely as we were discussing, just kind of creaking its way on over there. In the end, I keep my same beliefs that I think this market is going to recover and go higher. We've been comparing lots of different charts. I did Cardano the other day. A lot of people responded and said, I'm going to skip this video because it's about Cardano. It has nothing to do with Cardano in specific. When I'm pulling up these other charts, I'm showing you these things to show you them in relation to the whole cryptocurrency market. We want to see that there are setups happening throughout different assets in the market that can validate other setups that we see so that we're not just blindsided and our belief system isn't saying, hey, I see it on this one, so it must be true. We want to make sure we're seeing stuff throughout the rest of the market. At least that's how my mindset works. Another one that I'm looking at over here is I'm looking at 0x. And once again, this is another one of those things that are set up just like the recovery of Bitcoin back in 2016 and 17, like we're talking about with the XRP price chart. And we can see how prices have come back down in here to touch these levels back in here, just like Bitcoin did back in this area right in here to come back and touch this see how many bounces we did up on here before the big breakdown the long consolidation the wyckoff accumulation the break back up holding underneath the breakout the back test same thing you can even see this wyckoff accumulation in this spring down in here just like we had for bitcoin back in here and we've shown the same thing over here on xrp and on Tuesday, we showed what was going on with Cardano versus Litecoin and how these are all just the same setups. But unfortunately for all of us, it's all just a waiting game as this thing just continues to creak sideways and pinpointing the moment in time where it's going to just actually break up this particular day. It's going to be quite difficult to figure out how to do. So really just looking at it from a bigger perspective and a bigger macro perspective is really the only thing I can do for my own personal emotions and my own patience at this point. As we've discussed with the XRP price chart, it shows exactly what a completed correction looks like and that we're in the Wyckoff accumulation phase in which we can see the similarities of Wyckoff accumulation happening over here. We have the selling climax, the automatic rally, the secondary test with a new high. And just like here, we have the selling climax, the automatic rally, the secondary test with the new high. Just perfect. Then coming back in for another secondary test, just like we have in here. And now we're at this, this kind of final point of accumulation in here and whether or not this thing has to kind of spring its way in a quick way or if it's just going to completely draw out in a complete creek, as in this example here with a spring and this example here with a creek. But so far at this point, it sure is looking very creaky. So it's just a wait and see. But if you can't tell from everything that I'm saying, still optimistic. We're just going through this final phases of accumulation happening in here. I've shown this over here on Bitcoin as well. Even when you look at a full completed correction of Bitcoin, that was a multi-year bear market in here. And just kind of look at what has happened with XRP in the last several months. It's a completed correction. And that's my opinion. That's what my beliefs are. Everything lines up to show what a completed correction would look like. And this is all just Wyckoff accumulation happening down in here. But as the ending phase of Wyckoff accumulation comes in and here, you can see that there's sometimes a spring, which happened in this example, or at the end of the 2018 bear market, you can see it had a creak. So that's just what we're waiting on right now. And my beliefs are that this market is going to go to the upside. That's my belief. That's how I have my bets placed. But the thing is, there's just patience right now. <laughs> So from a technical standpoint, I don't have a whole lot different to say today, but there is a lot going on in the cryptocurrency market right now. If you haven't noticed all the retweets over there on Twitter, including from myself, here's, a, here's the same thing from Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter. Retweeting this tweet says, Cryptocurrency red alert, there's a crypto provision hidden in a must-pass bill that will allow mass surveillance of the crypto economy. Luckily, an amendment has been introduced that addresses these issues. Tell your senator to support it as soon as possible. 
in which you can go to fightforthefuture.org to see what they're talking about. If you don't know, the infrastructure bill is set to be voted on pretty soon over there in the Senate and buried beneath all of the, you know, new plans to build nice new roads and bridges and beautiful, beautiful buildings is cryptocurrency regulation or cryptocurrency monitoring and taxing and reporting. And they're urging you to call your senators. You can see Brian Brooks right here, which is the CEO of Binance US. He also used to be the acting comptroller of the currency at the OCC. We can also see Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase over here sharing this as well. If you've been following threads on the infrastructure bill, you know that there is a hastily conceived provision related to digital assets. This provision could have a profound negative impact on crypto in the United States and unintentionally push more innovation offshore. Coinbase is happy to help customers fulfill tax obligations just like the rest of the financial services industry. We've been doing this for years and issuing more 1099s is a great idea, but the bill defines brokers to include any anyone who effectuates transfers of digital assets. This means almost anyone in the crypto ecosystem could be treated as a broker with massive reporting obligations. This makes no sense. Smart contracts, for instance, are not companies and cannot be modified to collect KYC info or issue 1099s. They are simply software running on the blockchain that anyone can use. Fortunately, Senator Senators Wyden, Toomey, and Loomis have an amendment that narrows the definition to intermediaries like Coinbase who actually have the capacity to report just like in the traditional financial system. The infrastructure bill also imposes sweeping and unprecedented reporting requirements that will force exchanges like Coinbase and others to surveil its customers' transactions in a way that is more intrusive than the rest of the traditional finance. All we ask for is an even playing field with traditional finance that doesn't penalize cryptocurrency unfairly. So let's go back to that, right? The infrastructure bill also imposes sweeping and unprecedented reporting requirements that will force exchanges like Coinbase and others to surveil its customers' transactions in a way that is more intrusive than the rest of traditional finance. So this has been slipped in there into the infrastructure bill, and Senators Wyden, Toomey, and Loomis have proposed an amendment, but it does need senator support. So I'm not affiliated with these people in any way, but fightforthefuture.org does have more information on there about how you can contact your senators. And of course, you could just check out my Twitter page right there, and I have that information as well. I've seen lots of you guys out there saying that you've gone ahead and called your senators and calling them out publicly on Twitter to let them know. And just so you know, I as well have called my senators as well to support the amendment made by Senator Wyden, Toomey, and Loomis in the amendment to the cryptocurrency provision of Bill HR 3684. Now, let's move on to this guy. <laughs> Gary Gensler, speaking at the virtual 2021 Aspen Security Forum, sent shockwaves and anger throughout the cryptocurrency market, especially in the XRP community, have, who are all too familiar with how the tone and attitude of the SEC has been. I don't really want to go into this in kind of the negative light, because the reality is, you know, everybody's got a sour taste about all of this, right? It's no secret, right? I think the thing is, you know, let, let me read the tweet that I made after I saw, I, I watched that thing. Let me read this tweet. I know nothing about court stuff, but I would think if Gary Gensler came out and said anything other than there is plenty of clarity already, then it would have hurt their lawsuit against Ripple with the fair notice defense. He played his cards properly for his team. So essentially he was asked, you know, hey, when do you think we're going to get more clarity so, you know, everybody can abide by the rules and, you know, everything, you know, we can move forward with this technology. And he laughed and chuckled and very confidently responded, there is plenty of clarity, right? Look at the 75 lawsuits that we already have. There is way more than enough clarity already out there. Now, that response is pretty much a, kind of an expected response for me. You got to think about it. If they're in the lawsuit, if he said something like, you know what? I think we're going to have more clarity this and this or that or this. And this is how we're going to have more clarity. Boom, that would have just absolutely hurt their case against Ripple and their lawsuit against Ripple. So he didn't do anything that would have impacted his lawsuit because Ripple is saying they didn't have fair notice and that there isn't clarity. Of course, he's going to come out and say that there is clarity. But the problem is, is the attitude that he did it with, right? It was the same chuckling, laughing, being buddy-buddy with all the people that he's talking with on there. And it was just the way he carried himself and his persona about it that really got underneath people's skin. And regardless of the expected words that came out of his mouth, because you would have to expect those words to come out of his mouth because of the lawsuit that they're in, his body language, his attitude, everything about the way he carried himself during this thing proved that 
he is not on cryptocurrency's side. And if that's not true, and if, you know, my assessment of him not being on cryptocurrency's side, well, then you have to assume we're going to have the same thing happening that's been happening where the SEC can choose the winners and choose the losers, right? Whether or not this is a free market or not, or is there regulation that interferes with everything to impact who's going to be the winner and who's going to be the loser? We didn't get any confidence out of this that there's going to be anything clear. The fact that the question keeps getting asked at the SEC over and over and over again by everyone, when can we have some clarity? And they keep coming back with the, there is plenty of clarity, right? And then they don't give specific clarity at all. It just shows they don't have the intention of making any type of change. They want to be able to have the control to pick and choose who's going to be a winner, who's going to be a loser. And as we all know, all these people come from these big banks, right? He's a former Goldman Sachs employee. We saw what happened with Jay Clayton and with Bill Hinman the second they stepped out of office where they went. And I think there's very interesting reasons for why Elon Musk will publicly come out and attack the SEC, in which he has gone on public and national television to say, I want to be very clear, I have no respect for the SEC. So I think a lot of people had their hopes up that this guy would potentially be on the side of cryptocurrency, considering that he taught classes at MIT regarding crypto, but he made it very clear He's not. But that'll probably be the end of that topic discussion for me. I, I just, I don't cover it too much. I, I, you know, I always had those kind of mix. I watched a lot of his videos from MIT. I've had mixed opinions on whether or not he was really going to be somebody for our team or not. I know a lot of people had high hopes on that. But just watching the way he carried himself in those MIT courses kind of made me say, this guy wears a lot of pride on his shoulder that he knows what's up, right? That he's the one in control. And I, and I think he made that clear. And I think he played his cards properly for his team, which is the SEC in this lawsuit. And he didn't say anything that was going to hamper their lawsuit in any way. Now, the one thing that I found very interesting, which of course goes into that whole clarity thing, if things are so clear, why do you have to do this? When he started that interview, he started it by saying, I want to make something very clear. Anything that I say during this interview represents my personal opinions and thoughts and does not represent that of the SEC, even though he's the chair, he's the leader of the SEC. If you're going to say anything, that's not what the view of the SEC is. Why would you have to actually say something like that at the beginning if there wasn't extreme clarity? It's because things are so unclear that if he accidentally gives something clear, he doesn't want to do that, <laughs> right? How else do you interpret that? Why would the chair of the SEC come out and say, anything that I say does not represent the SEC, it only represents my personal opinions? I, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't look like we're going to get that type of clarity out of it anytime soon. But what was really interesting is that the CFTC commissioner came out yesterday and said, just so we're all clear here, the SEC has no authority over pure commodities or their trading venues, whether those commodities are wheat, gold, oil, or crypto assets. So we've got a war going on between different aspects of the government over who gets to control cryptocurrency. But the CFTC has been more friendly to crypto than the SEC has. So it is just a cluster, a uh, cluster with the F word afterwards <laughs> of what's going on here in the United States in regards to regulating cryptocurrency. And as Brad Garlinghouse said in his interview yesterday, the United States is just getting completely left behind by this. China is so many years ahead of all of us. The rest of the world is years ahead of us. Um, and I wonder how much of all of that really just has to be with holding on to the United States dollar as the world reserve currency. And if this is just a grip to keep a hold of the dollar being the dominant player, and that might be really what's going on here and that we're not just getting left behind. We're doing everything we possibly can to hold on to the dollar being the world reserve currency and nothing else competing. But that's just theory, right? That's just speculation. I don't know. Because otherwise, <laughs> what the heck is going on in the United States? Get it together, guys. But, you know, if you know me at all, right, I, I am one of those believers that the world is a stage. Everything happens when it's supposed to happen. I look at the prices of crypto. I look what's going on in regulations and with everything. 
everything, right? We got the SEC coming out threatening that there's no clarity. Anybody, anybody can get attacked by us, right? Then you have also this, you know, bill being passed, you know, in the Senate and Congress right now that's very scary and, and doomsday looking for cryptocurrency at this point. I don't know how any of that stuff's going to turn out, what impacts that will have on crypto whenever they do happen, if they do happen, if they don't happen. But I do know that prices have been suppressed and we've been in, you know, a couple of months now with prices being pushed real down and we're adding a whole lot more fear in there, right? From narratives and from story building. You don't get those types of things happening when prices are high. You just don't. But the thing is, the market just seems to continuously shrug it off. And we can see even just as in the timing of me recording this video, Ethereum pushed up even a little bit higher right over here, setting a new high compared to yesterday. And same goes for the total altcoin market cap. But for me personally, when it comes to all this stuff, right, when it comes to all this SEC stuff, when it comes to all this Congress stuff, you know, for me personally, I have to like just tune all this stuff out. And whether that's right or whether that's wrong, I just tune it out. I'm just like, man, there's so much noise going on in the background. But that's what helps me get through a lot of these moments is just try to tune it out. I know I covered it in today's video. I watch the videos and stuff like that. But I don't go into it with an emotional approach and sit there and watch this video and say, oh, no, why would he say that? I'm, I'm super upset about it. I'm just like, yep, yeah, OK, that's who this guy is. So what? Let's move on. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but that's what I do. No, I don't know if the, you know, the whole thing with the Senate stuff and the bill, if that's all just, you know, theater in itself as well. The only thing I can do within my control is do what you do is, you know, is recommended by all the other people that are saying out there, look, we need some support, call your senators. That wasn't hard. That took five minutes of my time to do that. I'll do it. If that isn't a stage and there was an opportunity for me to play a role in that and call my senators and I didn't do it, well, then you know what? I, I, I got to blame myself then a little bit, right? So I did call my senators. I don't know if there's going to be enough time. I recommend, you know, do it yourself. I don't want to be surveilled, right? I don't want, you know, and, and that's the thing about crypto, right? For when it comes to, when it comes to crypto, for me, I have specific use cases of crypto that I like. I like the store of value stuff. I like the anti, you know, inflation, right? An inflation hedge. I like the cross-border payment stuff because I've done a lot of wire transfers in my life. I understand how broken that system is, how terrible it is that we're doing this in 2021. We're still sending wire transfers for international business. It's the most, it's the biggest bunch of nonsense out there. It makes so much sense to have something that can settle nearly instantaneously and you can track it and very low fee. That makes perfect sense to me. That use case makes perfect sense to me. And another use case to me is privacy. We don't have everybody looking at our transactions. That's why I, I can't imagine Bitcoin being an actual actual currency that we use in any way because who wants you who wants to some anyone in the world to be able to look at what money they're spending nobody wants you you, you buy stuff you buy it privately and everybody says if you're buying something private you have something to hide baloney man you may be buying some type of medications that you don't want people to know that you're buying you may have to buy something on amazon you don't want people to know that you have to buy you may be buying something for the bedroom that you don't want people to know that you're buying right doesn't necessarily mean you're buying bad stuff but everybody does respect their own privacy and if there's gonna be massive surveillance of all of our transactions in crypto i don't want that i'm not doing anything nefarious but i want privacy just like i do on my visa card right or at least i have the illusion that i think i have privacy i know that my my next door neighbor can't see what I'm spending my money on, right? So anyway, call your senators. What I was getting at, privacy coins, I understand them. I get that. Cross-border payments, I get that. Anti-inflation or a hedge against inflation, I get that too. But having, an, um, having something in a bill that forces the monitoring and the surveillance of all of your transactions, well, I mean, <laughs> come on, call your senators. But all right, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Let me fill you in on what's going on with me, guys. Yesterday, I took the day off. I posted over there on Twitter that, hey, like I've taken one day off in the last 10 days. I'm feeling exhausted. There's been something that's changed about my routine that I haven't shared with you guys. Now, I exercise every day. I'm actually on like a 290 day streak of exercising at least 30 minutes a day. 290 days since like November 2nd. So I don't know how many days that is, but November 2nd, I think it's 250, 290, something like that. I've never missed a day. I've exercised for 30 minutes. Whether that's just walking or a light jog, anything to get my heart rate up to get it into exercise zone. I've done that for 30 minutes a day for 200 and something days in a row. A month ago, I started doing high intensity interval training early in the morning. I used to wake up at six o'clock in the morning. That was my routine all the time. Now I wake up at 4.45 in the morning and I go and do high intensity interval training before I ever do my YouTube videos. 
and my body is still acclimating to that. If you don't know what high intensity interval training is, you know, you get to sound like the CrossFit guy who tells everybody, hey, do you do CrossFit? You should join CrossFit. Hey, you don't do CrossFit. Anyway, <laughs> it's like box jumps and kettlebells and deadlifts and all kinds of stuff. And uh, it just gets your heart rate up and down and up and down really fast and just thoroughly exhausts the heck out of you. Anyway, I've been doing all that stuff at the same time and only taking a day off. I needed a, I just needed a rest yesterday. I, I worked out in the morning yesterday. I was pooped when I came on here, started sitting down to record. I'm like, oh, I can't do it today. I'm exhausted. But anyway, that's what's going on with me at this time. But today I'm feeling good. I still went and did it again this morning, but I feel much better today that I had a day off yesterday. So that is why I was not here yesterday. And with that note, I will bid you farewell. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. So I'll wrap this thing up. I want to thank you so much for watching. Over here on my website, this is bcbacker.com. This is my course where I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs and the different altcoin market cycles. I have a ton of videos on here deep diving into all of this stuff and showing how the previous cycles have worked, how the altcoin market has worked with Bitcoin. I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators, and I teach you how to use trading views. So if you haven't used any of the indicators or if you haven't learned how to do your own charting, I teach you how to set that stuff up over there on TradingView and with CoinTrader Pro. I talk about my personal exit plans in here, mathematics, percentages, all kinds of good stuff. I did also include a market update in here just a couple of days ago. It's a 17 minute video right there, July 31st. It's available to anybody enrolled in the course and anybody who newly enrolls in the course, you do have access to those market updates in there. And you can check out my website over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I wanna thank you guys so much for watching my channel channel if you could please like this video and give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when i create new content and when i go live as always this is not investment advice and i am not a financial advisor but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance just remember that the blockchain backers got your back have a good one